Alrighty, good afternoon, you lovely ladies and gentlemen out there. Thank you for joining me for yet another segment of Weather Center Nazario. We're not going to do a fancy, luxurious introduction, nor are we going to do an outro once again today because I'm unfortunately pressed for time here at the home front. So I'm going to get right into the latest information that I have to pass along with you guys. And I will say we're only going to emphasize one area of interest that's been recently brewing up on a few different model platforms. We're going to start with a little bit of what's happening right now, though, because we have an abundance of tropical energy working its way through the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico, spreading numerous showers and storms for much of Florida, much of Cuba. They impacted the living daylights out of Jamaica yesterday, and they're also spreading further eastward into the Bahama Islands, especially the northern and central Bahama Islands, with a little bit of breakaway convective activity trying to form to the south and over Dominican Republic and Haiti. This is going to persist for another day or two. We're not going to fully see this system evacuate out of the southeast AOR until we get that good frontal system and next layer of jet energy aloft to kind of kick it out of its place and shear it apart and work its way out into the Atlantic. And even then, we're not really going to get a reprieve from lots of thunderstorm and especially rainfall activity because with the introduction of another frontal system, we're going to see our moisture content in Florida and the rest of the Gulf Coast, for that matter, start to go up as we go throughout the rest of this week and even into the weekend, unfortunately. We'll still see that cold air come in, but it looks like our rain chances are going to do very little in the way of decreasing for us here in the Sunshine State. You can anticipate that you will see some elevated wind speeds with some of the more organized convection in this blob of tropical energy, this tropical wave that was moving through the Caribbean, trying to exit into the Gulf of Mexico as it pushes through the western tip of Cuba, you can also guarantee you're going to see increased cloud-to-ground lightning, lots of thunder, you may lose power in your area. Yesterday I did on uh, the first periphery of these storms working their way into central Florida, and we can't rule out the possibility that there may be some inundation, and by that I mean just some localized flooding, water collecting on roadways and lower-lying areas in your neighborhood, just because of the fact that some of these storms where they're going to get a little more upward vertical motion with them, more aggressive updrafting, and as a result, we'll have heavier precip following with some of the more stronger bands as they move in and flare up with the combination of daytime heating that we've been seeing here in Central Florida. Now, all that aside, that's not what I really want to talk about today. We're going to take what little time I have to communicate with everybody and talk what I'm seeing in the Caribbean. It's something we've been talking about for about a week's time now. Let's get into that. Here we are on the 12Z Canadian model, and now if you guys hearken back to August, this time, our I named storm, Idalia, the Canadian model was the number one pusher, the number one emphasizer of Idalia's formation and where it was anticipated to track. The CMC, not only the operational run, but the ensemble members with the Canadian model were very intuitive in terms of where it was going to go and was emphasizing one specific source region for her development, and it knocked it out of the park, in my opinion. Over the last 7 to 10 days, which ironically is the exact same time interval that had passed between when I first noticed the same trends with Adalia, we finally have some agreement between our Canadian ensembles and the CMC actual deterministic run for 12 Zulu. As you go through time, if you watch over Central America, we see a large flare-up of thunderstorm and precip activity before, look at that, we have a low pressure work its way off the coast and into the central, if not the very western portions of the Caribbean. And now before you guys say that I'm harping on one particular model run, I'll show you as we go two days back in time that the model has actually already been trending this. Here we are looking at 500 millibar vorticity, and if you watch down near the area of Nicaragua, Panama, even closer to Costa Rica, as you get to the very tail end of the run, look at that little bit of spinach, that upper level vorticity that the Canadian model's emphasizing down there, getting ready to plop into the Southern Caribbean. And at the very tail end of the run, you can see it start to circulate and do so as it gets over open water. The kicker to this is this is actually 0Z on Monday, which would be late in the evening Sunday. The model was emphasizing it just couldn't make it out in time. The model was pointing out that we could see something spill over the Central American landmass once again and start to bubble up in the Caribbean thanks to our hot ocean waters, ocean heat content, and very good shear conditions on top of the moisture that's already been surging through the area over the last 24, 48 hours. If you go to 12Z on Monday, you can see the same spinach at the very back end of the run starting to work its way now through Nicaragua and Costa Rica, headed towards the same exact source region as we saw Idalia. If you fast forward one more time to 0Z, same thing. Western Caribbean, right off the Yucatan Peninsula, headed into open water where it can start to form up. And then as we're all very well aware of, if we go to 12Z today, you can see that it has repositioned it a little further to the east, positioning it over the extreme western portions of the Caribbean, just off the coastline, not only of Costa Rica, but very dangerously close to Jamaica as it tries to undergo a little bit more 
deepening. So as you can see, on the operational side of things, this has been trending. The ensembles, it goes without saying, if you've been watching my videos or tuning in for my live streams, the ensemble members have also been kind of recognizing that there is a chance something's going to spill over the Central American landmass and start to get its act together and move to the north. Here are the latest ensembles for 12Z. It goes without saying, I don't really have to go back in time because for all intents and purposes, it's showing the same thing. As you go through time and you get closer and closer to the first week of October, you already can see that all the lowering heights, all the lowering pressure across Central America are now in the Pacific. The Pacific Ocean is expected to get a little more active as well with some tropical cyclone development. But if you look out over the Caribbean Sea itself, you can already see a few ensemble members whispering that something tropical could try to take shape. And as you move through the 4th into the 5th, you really start to see the lowering heights start to take shape and expand further to the north with something even appearing off the east coast of Florida into the Bahamas. And as you go towards the very tail end of the ensemble run, you get another wave of lowering heights. And you can see a nice amount of agreement pushing into the Western Caribbean, all the same as what the current deterministic run is showing. This has been the trend for about a week, if not a little over a week. I believe it's been five to six different Tropic Talk iterations that I've had at 8 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you do the math, that would put us at about maybe a week and a half ago where we first started to identify that the ensembles were pinging on something. The GFS was on and off about it as well. The GFS today, the ensembles are hinting towards at about the exact same time frame between the 4th to October 6th, maybe into the 7th, something could try to put itself together in the Caribbean Sea. We're going to do some cross-referencing between models as well just to show you that the dynamics are in place and all model platforms pretty much agree that there will be a favorable environment taking shape in the Caribbean to support this little bit of a theory that the Canadian model is onto right now. As you go through time, you can see the introduction of another very potent trough axis. This is going to be our cold front coming through for the weekend, pushing all that cold air down through the southeast and into the Gulf of Mexico. But as you go through time, you can quickly see that that ejects off to the east and in place just in time for some development out there, you can start to see little indications of upward vertical motion over Central America and little remnant anti-cyclones trying to build in across the Caribbean. That's what's going to evacuate a lot of the shear that was brought in by that long wave trough and spill it out into the Atlantic to not really pose any sensible harm to a wave or a disturbance or even just an area of disorganized thunderstorms that may try to appear out there. We'll now take a look at the 12Z Euro to do a little bit more verification between different model platforms. And as you go towards the back end of the run, albeit it is the extreme back end of the run because it doesn't quite hit that October 5th and 6th time frame. As you go through, you can see our frontal system really working its way through. We have different pushes of dry air, cold air advection as well down in the lower levels of the atmosphere. Right here, we're looking particularly at the mid-levels to see what kind of moisture content we have out there across the Caribbean Sea, Central America, and the further north you go. And as you get towards the back end of the run, you can start to see a really good flare-up of moist air advection or just moisture entering the environment across the Southern Caribbean, and it will continue to spread further north into the Caribbean before this next trough axis can come down to the south. So this will pretty much wrap up today's episode. I wanted to point out to you that we have been following the breadcrumbs leading up to this very fateful event. If it does pan out, or if we start to see things firing off in the East Pacific trying to move over Central America like they did with Adalia, that will be the main kicker here. And that's exactly what I'm going to start paying attention to. There is still a lot of lead time. We're only on September 26th, albeit September seemed to fly by. I can't believe we're on the cusp of October already. But we've also been mentioning that our tropical source regions are going to be changing, coming from the eastern Atlantic back closer to home. I've had a lot of other instances on social media where I've run into folks reinforcing this tidbit to everybody watching. So this is not unlikely. Is it a little bit of a stretch? In the moment, it is. We only have the Canadian model singing this tune for now. The only reason I'm putting a little more faith in it than typically I would is because of the fact that it has a proven track record, not only through the hurricane season, but with our named Storm Medallia, which it really hammered home and did a phenomenal job with from start to finish. So the main next course of action, number one, is to continue to see if it trends something in the Caribbean. As I took you through back in time, we saw that there were some trends indicating vorticity was going to flare up and try to move into Central America and eventually the Caribbean. Now that we can see that far ahead, 
ahead in time with the Canadian model and eventually even the Icon and the Euro. We'll have to see if we can start to develop a little bit more consistency, kind of like what we did with Adalia. It's great that we actually have Adalia to look back on to see if some of the parameters are matching up and mirroring one another because then we can also rule out long term if it's more likely or if it's less likely without having to fixate too much on model data specifically. I'm going to be watching closely for what happens in the Pacific. I'm going to be watching satellite and live analysis data just like with windy.com before we saw it move over Central America back in August and Adalia took shape. That's going to be our main area to watch. I don't want to watch the Caribbean. I don't want to watch Central America just yet. Even if we get some potent thunderstorm activity working its way across the Central American landmass, that's still not going to determine if this is going to take shape. I want to see what happens in the Pacific. And if something works its way between ocean to ocean, it's safe to hit the button and say, game on, guys, because it looks like we're not done yet. We'll go ahead and wrap the video segment up right there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you are new or haven't done so already especially if we start to see this trend across not only the Canadian consistently, but other model platforms, you may want to make sure your notifications are turned on because you do not want to miss an update video if this starts to become a thing. Other YouTube presences have been talking about this. Other meteorologists have been mentioning we have to watch this general area, so it's not entirely in the realm of hype or far-fetched reality. Thank you all for watching again. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. We'll talk to you very soon, and we'll see you tomorrow for the next segment of Weather Center. Until then, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.